All right, what is up, guys? Welcome back to Late Night Shots Podcast, episode 108. We have Air Force Wyatt Hendrickson here today, so what's up? How are you doing? Good. Having a good day so far, ending it with a little podcast. Yeah, it's awesome. So before we get into it, Derek has a quick word from our sponsors. As all of you know, we have three sponsors. You could uh, find the links down below. They're uh, Liquid IV, Defense Soap, Body Art Nutrition. You've heard us all talk about it a ton of times before. Just, you know, where the links are at down below. Just keep using them. Big stars off, too, if you want. All right. Well, uh, welcome to the show. We appreciate you coming on. Obviously, um, you're somebody, you know, we wanted to have on. So it's great to have you here. Um, our first guest from one of the military schools. So that's guess something you could say a little bit special for yourself. First, uh, first military heavyweight we've had on. So you might as well start there. Um, when you, when everybody talks military, everybody thinks, you know, these big ripped up soldiers. So for you, you know, wrestling heavyweight, Hey, you're a big guy. We're, we're going to say you're a big guy. So for you wrestling in, in a military school, what's that like being a heavyweight and then also being in the military? Yeah, so it's definitely a lot different than a normal college. So I remember when I was in high school, when I was little, I always saw, I'd go to watch college tournaments and I'd see like Army and Navy. And I'm like, I don't get it. Like, aren't they in the Army and Navy? Like, what are they doing here wrestling? Um, and then I finally understood what it meant when I got an offer um, my sophomore year of high school. And so it's definitely, it's different. That's for sure. Um, wrestling is not our main goal here. I mean, I wish it was like all the other colleges, but um, pretty much every single academy, you know, Army, Air Force, Navy, we have academies and there's about 4,000 cadets each. And so pretty much um, we're learning how to be officers and um, our respected fields. And so, but while we're here, we also, um, you know, we got wrestling team, we got a bunch of sports. And so I actually, I was so confused. I got a letter in the mail from the Air Force. I'm like, well, I don't want to go in the Air Force at first. And then um, it's like, yeah, we want to come wrestle. I'm like, I don't get it. Like, what's going on? Looked into it more and realized, I'm like, oh, you know, it's like you're wrestling for the Air Force, but it's all, it's like a college. So it's just a four-year college. And pretty much here, we're just being trained to become officers. And I'm also blessed to be able to wrestle at the same time. But going through like wrestling and being at the academy, this is like for all the service academies, it's a lot different. Uh, mm-hmm. we, it's definitely uh, not the normal college experience. So I, it is kind of tough sometimes. Like we don't always have the opportunity to stay after practice. For example, like we got military dues we got to do. We got academics are heavy, a heavy hitter here. You know, we go to practice and it's like, you know, we're done at 530 and sometimes we can't stay 30 minutes extra because we got a brief got to make at six or, you know, stuff like that. But I mean, a lot of other college you know, academics are tough, but here it's, you know, that third aspect of the military um, keeps you on your toes and keeps you busy. That's for sure. Yeah. So I think you more than anyone, uh, if you want to walk us through like uh, just a typical day in the life, like during the season, like what is that like for you? Yes. So the one outlier year is your freshman year. So your freshman year, you're called a dually. That's, that's tough. So your schedule is packed. So my freshman year last year, I'll go through that first and I'll go through my day right now. But pretty much we have um, morning morning duties. You got to stand at attention, get yelled at for 20 minutes. So that's at like 6.20 to 6.40. You know, say what we're eating today. You got to memorize a bunch of stuff. And then we had to practice at about 6.45, 7 o'clock. Um, our schedules are a little bit shifted. So it just depends on we get periods off, stuff like that certain days. So have a morning lift, morning practice. Um, that's done about 8.30, shower up head up, get some breakfast, go to class until about noon, eat some more, lunch, go back to class till about 3.35-ish, go down, practice, come back, usually have a briefing at 7.15 every night, and then homework until 11, go to bed, do it all over again. So oh, also, the weekends also suck because we have like, it's called Silver Weekends, Silver Saturdays. As a freshman, luckily because of covid i didn't have to do as much but it's just they take away all your saturdays with you know you got to do a bunch of more training stuff but that's over with so now it's a lot more relaxed less briefings but still morning left class but less briefings, so more free time finally yeah so you know looking at this season just wrestling wise uh i think uh you were the nation's pin leader at this end of the season 
Yes. So I actually didn't even know about that. So funny story, actually. So there's like, you know, COVID still a thing, regulations. And for certain reasons, um, I chose not to get vaccinated. And the Air Force did not like that decision. And they said, well, okay, you're not going to wrestle for us. And so I actually didn't wrestle for the Southern Scuffle. That was my first tournament. And um, it was, I was never really going for the most pins. I just like going out there and, you know, wrestling hard and winning, of course, you know. And of course, the pins, you know, the best way to win. And so I actually didn't even know that that was like an award until like late February rolled around. I'm like, oh yeah, like my friend's like, oh, you're like, you know, on the top for the pins. I'm like, the heck is that? But so that was really cool. But I didn't even know about that. But yeah, I finished with like 16 or 17 pins, I believe. I forgot how many it was, but yeah, I think your 17th was uh in the first round nationals. Yep. Yeah, so you know, I think even going back to last year, you know, you're a true freshman. I think uh, you already had, like, the established guys in the field. You kind of just, like, came out of nowhere. So, like, you know, what's it like wrestling that college schedule as a freshman? What was your experiences like at the national tournament? So, it's definitely um, super different with COVID. The whole year had been off. But I was just grateful for the opportunity to go wrestle at the NCAA tournament. I'm like, well, I'm here. I'm uh, you know, I'm going to make a bang. So, I kind of – I didn't hold back and I think I wrestle well and I don't hold back most of the time. We'll get to that later, but I just went out there and I was like, I'm going to go wrestle. Then I saw Gable second round and I'm like, sweet, you know? So I went out there. He's a, uh, he's a pretty good wrestler. If I have to say, you know? Um, so yeah, I got the upper hand of me there, but then went through the backside and I started wrestling and I got to the blood rounds and I was like, Holy crap. Like I'm one match away from being all American. This is sick. But, you know, Trent Helger, great wrestler, had a good match with him, lost a good match, five to three, six to three, something like that. But then that definitely carried over to this year. I was like, wow, I can actually kind of wrestle. So. Yeah. So you know, what do you think in general of your performance like throughout the season? Because I know you came out with the uh, with bang, you know, the sudden scuffle. I think you pinned your way through a tournament. I did. I had – I didn't pin – I had uh, two tacks. No, in a major. I didn't – I had, like, three pins, I think, and yeah. a major in tech. Um, a good pin in the finals. That was fun. But I had a pretty good year this year, I felt like. Um, I was training hard, working hard. I definitely developed a better mindset than the end of the year. And But, you know, you got good days and you got bad days. And, you know, I was, I was super pumped for the NCAA tournament. I had high expectations. Um, and my mind was like, I'm going to place top six. So there's no doubt about it. Went out there, had a good first match. And then second match, Christian Lance got some good hips. So I got on his leg like seven or eight times. I all, I pretty much had him to, it was, you know, continuation rule. Had him once, you know, he quickly got off of his hip, didn't get take down there. Another time I almost got behind him, didn't get take down there. And so what I kind of wish I would have had is, so here at the Air Force, I'm the only heavyweight right now. So I wrestle 97 pounders every day. Um, Christian Lance weighed a lot more than a 170 pounder or 197 pounder. So he, has, he, got, you know, he has got some great defense. Um great wrestler um you know he's been wrestling for seven years in college you know so I'm, i was i was definitely upset but after that match i was just like man like i need to be wrestling these guys earlier in the season i can't wrestle these big 10 guys like you know for the first time at the ncaa tournament so after that match i was kind of just thrown off i was still i was in disbelief i'm like did i really lose that match like like what's going on and so then i went on to wrestle orndorff um got a nice takedown kind of got lazy um, he threw me, nice throw, almost pinned me, but kind of battled back. So I ended up losing that, um, not even in the blood rounds yet. But um, I was pretty disappointed. It took me a while to kind of come to the reali realiz realization, like, wow, like that just happened. And I was like, I was pretty upset with myself. But, you know, the only only thing I can do now is look forward to next year and go make some adjustments and wrestle some bigger people for the NCAA tournament. I think yeah. more than anything, you know, there's uh... – a couple guys in the weight class leaving next year, most notably Gable. Then I think uh, Lance is leaving, Jordan Woods leaving. So that's pretty much three spots already off the podium. And then a bunch of other guys. You know, I think right now the guys to beat would be Colin Schultz, Greg Kirkley, Cassiope, and Paris, yep. most likely. I don't think – have you wrestled any of them? Yes, I've wrestled Kirk LeVay and Schultz, but I was 11 years old. 
Okay. <laughs> so I've wrestled for a long time. Um, still yet to beat him, you know, but time has changed. So, I mean, I'm just ready to – I love competing at high levels. And that's one thing. I kind of wish we had a more – um a harder regimen, a harder schedule. But, you know, next year I'm going to be going to some bigger tournaments. Uh, we've talked to the coaches. We're kind of shifting some things around. And I'll be able to see those guys before the NCAA tournament and get some good matches in and come back here and fix some stuff. Um, Did you, were you guys able to pick up a heavyweight off of the board this year? We were, and so we we had it. We did have another heavyweight, but he was he was he's been injured all year. We knew that, so I'll have I'll have two new partners next year, which is awesome. So I'm super pumped about that. Yeah, that's um, I that's that's something my my college is fighting with right now. Is trying to trying to pick up a couple more heavyweights because I'm also the only heavyweight on my team as well. So it's uh. It, I know I know what you feel wrestling the 97 pounders. It's it, there's yeah. nothing compared to wrestling a true heavyweight. So I'm up, but you know, <laughs> gotta have some big guys too. Yeah. So yeah. you know, you're at Air Force, you know, obviously you're there because of the whole military academy thing. But what were you, what were your offers looking like out of high school? So I committed pretty early on actually so really before anyone could get their foot in the door air force like grabbed the door walked in and slammed it like he's ours and so they definitely hit it hard with me and i've always kind of i never really had an interest in the military but after learning um i've always been a super patriotic person too and i've done everything i can you know as a civilian but just the things the military offers and as soon as you know they, they start talking about it, like like I can't choose that. So, of course, it's a full ride here at Air Force. But I think I committed, like, as early as you can, like, sophomore summer, going to junior year already. Yeah. At that time, there weren't big schools looking at me. Um, I was, like, an okay right. I think I was, like, 23rd in the nation, you know, on flow or, you know, all that stuff at the time. But they were the first ones knocking on the door. Um, the other two were OSU and uh, and Nebraska. So those are really the only other ones that I'd like sent me, like they said, Hey, like, you know, come check it out. And I was like, yeah, I kind of already, you know, I'm committed to air force. And so I'm really glad the decision I made to come here because, you know, more than wrestling, I love wrestling, but more than that, I also care about good education and other schools do offer that. But at the end of the day, um, wrestling is probably going to come to an end for me. I'm not going to do it till I'm there. I'm not, I'm not Jordan Burroughs. Um, and so I'll, I was just kind of looking long term and, you know, being in the military is I'm very proud of what I'm going to be able to do. So I'm in the military now, but we're not operational. So we're just interning. We're not doing anything cool, but I'm ready to get out there and, you know, make. So you have three more years of eligibility left. Is your school like they only let you do four years or can you take that fifth? It's just four. So I'll, I'll be a, here I'll be a junior, then a senior. So two more years here. Then I'm looking to grad school somewhere, so we'll see. We'll see where that goes. What's your major right now? So I am management, but I'm hoping yeah. to go into the space force and go in the acquisitions area. Okay. I love doing money. I'm kind of a weird kid. I read books on money, and my parents make fun of me for it, but I enjoy it. So. Yeah. Hey. Oh, so I mean, for you, you know, obviously, you know, obviously, people probably, you know, when they hear about the Air Force Academy. They're probably not thinking, oh, they have a, you know, a good wrestling team or obviously stuff like that compared to Army and compared to Navy. Because, I mean, obviously there's been some hammers that can come out of Army, some hammers that have come out of Navy. So, I mean, what's that like for you and your teammates kind of being at, you know, that third level of the military academies, you know, kind of being a little bit behind Army and Navy? What's that like for you guys? Oh, just dogging on us. All right. Hey, I'm, um, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't, you know, I see, you know, we, we like see Army at like so many tournaments. They're everywhere. Yeah. They're all over the country. I think it's insane how Army travels. Yeah, they do do a lot of tournaments. Um, So actually, so the all academy tournaments. So we, 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 we actually competed against Army and Navy this year. We were at the same tournament. And actually, we out wrestled them in matches sixteen to four, and Whoa. so you know, yeah. So that was a good. I forgot what tournament that was. I got a hat. Hold on, it was the oh, the David H. Lehman F and M Open. That was the tournament. So they were there. 
Um, got a hat, won the tournament, beat the Navy guy. But um, I would say at, here at the Air Force, Col- I love Colorado. It's a beautiful spot. But, uh, of course, you know, Navy and Army, that was, they got some good coaches. But we're actually supposed to wrestle. La- we had the All-Academy Championships for the first time. Um, Army didn't they didn't decide not to compete in it last year and then that was just because you know there must have been like a problem they had like the new director but so now we don't really have a chance to compete them head to head in duels and tournaments but you know we still live to go another day <laughs> i mean obviously for you guys you know like you said your your you know your goal isn't quite at the level of a penn state and an iowa your guys may go really isn't to go out there and win national championships. So in your opinion, how do you think that kind of affects your recruiting a little bit and you bringing guys in, you know, when, to be quite frank, your, your end goal is not to be national champs. You know, it's, that's not really what the school is about. It's not a big athletic school. It's not a, an Iowa or a Nebraska. So what's that kind of like for the team, you know, bringing in recruits is, do you think it gets a little bit harder to get recruits that way? It's definitely harder to get recruits that way. So I'm going to, so as the Academy, of course, we're going to be officers, but down in the wrestling room, like we're trained to be national champions. Yeah, oh, of course. Yeah. But it's, I mean, not having the support of the school, you know, at the academies, they kind of compare the wrestling team to the bowling team. Like no one really knows, no one really cares, but it's definitely different because you are, you know, you're joining a wrestling team, but more than that, you know, you're signing up for something to serve your country as soon as you're done. And so in the recruiting process, I mean, they don't, they don't hide anything from you here. Like we're very open. Like, look, you're going to come here in these classes. And as soon as you're done, you're going to, you know, you're going to serve for five years minimum. And it's, it's a guaranteed job. They It's serving also, but it's a guaranteed job. It's awesome. And so that kind of scares some people when you're getting recruited because, you know, you're still young, you, you know, you're having fun in high school, you know, you're a junior in high school and you're looking into this and the sound of joining the military and, you know, going and marching every day and putting on a uniform all the time. Some people don't like that and they because their mind is more on wrestling. So a lot of us that come, we were kind of able to step back and look like, you know, what's our life going to look like in 10 years if I go here? What's it going to look like in 10 years if I go here? And for me, this is the perfect fit for me and, and all the other wrestlers on our team. Um, but a lot of these guys, um, like they're Astro majors. And, so, you know, they're learning to, you know, eventually go be, you know, go up into space, stuff like that, build rockets. And that's, I'm not going to lie, that's pretty exciting too. Like wrestling's fun, but looking forward in the future, we're definitely excited about that. So it's definitely different get recruits because at that time, it's it's just a stage where, you know, it's, it's hard to say, yeah, I want to go commit and do this for the next nine years of my life in the military. So. So, I mean, unlike a lot of guys, you know, whose careers have ended and, you know, they're kind of in that middle point. Do you, you're not really sure what, what's, you know, what's next for you after these, after you graduate from Air Force, you're not really sure if you're going to continue wrestling or you think wrestling is pretty much going to be a four or five year thing. And then that's pretty much going to wrap up your career. So luckily in the Air Force, there is something called WCAP, the world class athlete program. And I did wrestling. I'm not going to wrestle forever, but Mm -hmm. I definitely think I'm going to join that program. So pretty much what we're going to do then is, we have an all air force team and you know, we just trained to go to the you know, world team trials and, you know, try to go to the Olympics. And so I'm, it's like two to four years depending. And that is probably going to be one of my main options that I'm going to try to do. So I'm probably going to throw in an extra two or three years after the Academy. So my job for the air force will be traveling and wrestling and training. And so as of right so now, that's, that's the plan. Yeah, I bet that's kind of got to be exciting to you, kind of like a light at the end of the tunnel, you know, and to know at one point, you know, once you graduate from the academy, you'll be able to actually kind of put all your eggs in the basket and just wrestle. So, I mean, that's got to be pretty exciting for you. Yeah, I am super excited to do that because it's an opportunity that's you know, it's kind of hard to get. You got to qualify yeah. for it and, you know, it's, it's just competitive. But, you know, luckily my wrestling skills have carried me this far and I'm like, well, you know, I think I deserve it. So. That is kind of nice, but I'm also, you know, I'm just excited to go out and just, we, so here, like we get to go visit different bases and look at it and I'm just excited for my future in general. So it all, it's like a bonus being able to wrestle before that. So I get to do both. I get the yeah. best of both. Worlds. So I'm definitely going to keep up my freestyle skills. 
Yeah. Yeah. Are you registered for the open? Yes. Yes, I am. You are. Okay. So was it top five at the open gets the world team trials? I believe so. Yeah. Okay, that's solid. I think there's yeah, I think it's like Don Bradley, yeah, Fernandez, yeah. who you already wrestled, and then like Lucas Davison. Yes, there's a there's a couple Derek White's in there too. That'll be fun. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I think Bradley is the only one already qualified. Yes. And I've 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 joined awesome. I've never competed against them, you know. Yeah. I never thought I ever would, but I'm I'm pumped. <laughs> hey, I would be pumped too, man. It's I mean, you know, especially, you know, at your level, being able to compete with those type of guys like that, you know, show out for your school as well and your country, go out there and perform. I feel like that's that's everything you want to do right there. Oh, yeah. I'm just the one thing I really like to harp on is um, in our coaches is just just the opportunities and how grateful we are for, you know, all the opportunities given in front of us, you know, being here at the academy, getting a good education and also wrestling at the same time. So, I mean, you can't ask for anything more. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay so uh you know going back to wrestling at all like you know when you had i think uh the southern scuffle again this season was really a breakout tournament because i think flow covered that a lot more than they did anything and you know you had the one match against uh duke i think first round where you pinned him in a cradle without even having your hands locked you know and then you know you're yeah. just putting on takedown clinics just turning guys at will and then, you know, you pin Fernandez pretty much twice in a minute. You know, that's a guy who wrestled New Jersey, you know, state champ. My uh, sophomore, junior year pinned everyone under a minute, you know. And to see someone do that to him is, like, actually crazy. It's like, what do you think are the changes you really made from your freshman season to, like, you know, the start of this season? I definitely think it was just – um a mindset shift and like a confidence shift. So obviously, you know, coming in as the freshman in college, I was like, okay, like I'm going to wrestle hard, but you know, I just, I didn't really have an expectation for myself yet. And after the NCAAs, I was like, man, like I, you know, I can scrap. And so I definitely, I went in with more confidence in my abilities and um, just tried to develop some better technique of, you know, cause heavyweights, they wrestle a little bit differently. I mean, nowadays, you know, they're getting extremely athletic. And so that's a big difference. Not all just, you know, like sumo wrestlers like they used to be. And so um, definitely just like my confidence and my mindset, I definitely narrowed that, that down a lot more. And I'm like, I'm going to go out there and you know, I'm going to win. Like, I knew I was going to win the match before I stepped on the mat. And so that was a big help. Um, so mainly just, I'd say, mindset and confidence. Yeah, I think there's a whole though from watching you. A lot this season, I think, uh, really separates you against your, you know, you you shoot a lot, your pace is really high, and your wrestling IQ is there too. Because I was watching the, I'll say the Big Twelve finals between you and Luke Server. And yes. what was it? I think, uh, you know, he comes out there, he gets that cross leg cradle early, and then yep. you're down what six zero. Uh, four four zero. Yeah, that one's for four back points, but yeah, yeah. So that was um. I wasn't too – obviously, I was like, well, I kind of sucked, but I was like, I'm still going to beat this guy. Like, that, like yeah, that like that kind of sucked, but that didn't really change. I knew as soon as I got up and they threw the challenge, I looked at my coach, and I'm like, it's fine. Like, that was – just just wait. You know, we've still got six minutes and 40 seconds left in this match. A lot's going to happen. Yeah. And a lot more did happen. And I, he was – I'm kind of glad I'm in – I obviously would have loved to pin him, but she was flat. I don't know. He, she was flat. But yeah. I'm not super upset about that because I just got to kick his butt even more. But he was he was pretty flat. <laughs> yeah, those those were all the comments. But like again, like what I was trying to touch on too is like your offensive arsenal just in general is like a lot more diverse and unorthodox. You know, not even the fact that heavyweights are getting more athletic, but just like in general. Because I remember on top you were going for like a roll through cradle, and there was something else too, like some weird tilt off of it. So what kind of goes into that? Are you just like, you know, you just like see it, take it, or you just kind of just do whatever you feel like, honestly? Yeah, so I definitely think at this high level, a lot of wrestlers could probably relate to this. You don't really think that much when you're wrestling. It's kind of just that muscle memory. You finally got to that level where your body feels something and it tells you to kind of do it. So a lot of that was 
like those cradles and those things I do. I mean, I was never a cradle person until this year because all the heavyweights are never used to being cradled. And, you know, once a guy stood up on me, I'm like, well, there's a cradle there. I'm, my mind's like, hey, lock your hands. You know, dropped and started cradling people. So I definitely think a lot of wrestlers can relate to that. But obviously, sometimes if they're not doing anything, I'm trying to just, you know, stay heavy, you know, heavy hips, you know, just pressure, stuff like that. But definitely at this level, you're just – they're all good wrestlers. So you kind of got to wait for them to make a mistake. And as soon as they do, your brain kicks in and says, hey, I've done this before. Let's do it again. And so – it's pretty much just almost automatic at this point. Yeah. So, you know, going to next season, technically your junior, you got two years left. You're halfway through your collegiate wrestling career. You have one goal, pretty much get on the podium, right? And win the thing. What changes do you think you have to make to get to make that happen? Um, I definitely think that I need to, I need to wrestle some bigger guys before the NCAA tournament. So that's for sure. I I think feel is a big thing because, you know, if I wrestle someone that weighs 200 pounds and 220 pounds, 220, 240, 260, 280, every position is probably going to feel different. If I shoot, you know, a high crotch in all of them, they're all going to react differently. And so I didn't really have the feel of those heavier guys because then we got some 197 pounds that are pretty big, but I'd shoot my sweep and I can usually finish almost every time. And then I shoot another Christian Lance, a big guy, and I'm like, this is a lot different feeling. My, my brain was like, what's going on? Like, this hasn't happened before. But also just kind of making more, um, being more selective with my shots, I think. I got to work definitely some more setups. I love shooting from open just because I think I'm pretty fast and, you know, I just get to the legs. But, you know, you don't get any points for taking a shot. You only get points for finishing. So definitely going to be a little selective and kind of be able to make more in-match adjustments. You know, if something's not working, if I've shot a, head inside single five times and haven't, you know, taken down on you. Maybe I should try something else. So being more selective, I'd say. Yeah. You know, another thing, you know, you're insanely strong. Like, what are your weight room numbers looking like? So in the off season, you get like, I usually get up to about 248, 250. But towards the NCAA tournament, I was the lightest I'd ever been. I was probably walking, walking in at 235. Most of the season around, you know, 243, 244. But at that point, you know, I'm only putting good food in my body. We're working our butts off and, you know, I'm just burning fat. I, I'm trying to keep the weight on. I'm got, I got a different schedule for this year, but I'm still mostly around the 240 range, I'd say. Yeah. What are your lifting numbers looking like if you ever max? So, I, so I, I don't max. I'm not a huge weightlifting guy. I've always kind of just – I'm a so I'm a big believer in chiropractic stuff like that. So putting you know deadlift, squatting big weight on your back. I'd say the most I usually squat is you know a plate or two, just a lot of reps. So surprise, I I don't really I don't put a lot of weight on. I don't max a lot. I have kind of a different lifting style, I'd say. But I mean, I think in high school I did like my junior year, um, not much. I think I squat three fifteenth most ever. Um, that's our, some of our lifting coaches, they're like, they, they will ride or die with squat. Like you got to squat every single day. So I've tried it a couple of times, but, um, I just like, I like feeling good. And I think after training the, a different style, not always throwing heavy weight, but just, you know, more tension, stuff like that. It's definitely, it's made me look bigger and I also just feel stronger and it's been working for me. So I'm just going to keep doing that. Yeah. We had some other guys in the podcast that gave us some, you know, crazy numbers. I remember Don Bradley said like 800, Trent Hilger 700, and uh, I want to say Christian Lance was like 700 also. For deadlift or? For squat. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot of weight to move. I've – that that would be nice to say, hey, I can go, you know, or, you know, AJ for 665, but – yeah, you know maybe that's, maybe that's what I'm missing. Maybe I gotta start squatting heavy. You know? um, <laughs> were you 65 deadlift? Were you wrestling at the duel with uh, Oklahoma State? No, so that's actually right when I found out I had, well I actually didn't know I had COVID yet, but I was like I don't feel good, and so like earlier that week I was wrestling. I'm like man, this doesn't feel like I'm getting kind of tired. Like I should I'm not tired yet. This doesn't happen. Kept wrestling, wrestling. Then Friday hit and I'm like. 
no, nah, like I'm, this isn't good. I, I can't even get out of bed. And so I actually missed that duel. Um, and that was right before Christmas, you know, and then I was like, all this, you know, tough it out. I drove home, got back and tested and I was like, Oh my God, COVID. So that was, yeah, I didn't wrestle in that duel. Yeah. Um, there. Yeah. I mean, obviously I think that would have, you know, obviously wrestling at that duel would have gave you a, you know, a little bit of a upper hand to start with against obviously your conference final match where you would have wrestled their heavy, you know, their heavyweight and, you know, obviously anyway. So, um, I mean, so what are you looking forward to next year? Are you going to get a little bit more of a packed schedule get a little bit more competition, kind of get, get after it with a couple more guys that are at that higher level? Yeah. So we've been talking and we're kind of shifting the schedule. And so I'm going to be going to um, a lot more tournaments that are where the big tens at. So definitely going to Las Vegas. Um, and a couple others I forgot. We the schedule's still being made, but just a lot of the we I'm adding in two more tournaments that like a lot of the Big Ten wrestlers are at, and so that's that's one of the biggest changes we're making because I you know it is nice going out there and wrestling hard people and you know winning, but also you know I for me I want to find I want to go out there and you know I want to lose and I want to lose and get better from it. So I'm not really af- afraid of losing. But I mean. I love the sport of wrestling. I go out there and I have fun. And so definitely just adding in some more competitions. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and I mean, that's, that's kind of what, you know, a lot of guys who didn't really wrestle the full season, whether that was because they got hurt or they had COVID or, you know, there was, you know, stuff going on. That's kind of everybody's plan is to kind of pack out next season and really take advantage of, you know, either having that extra year. I know for you, you don't really get that, which kind of obviously has to suck a little bit. You don't get that extra year that everybody I else might. got. I might eventually. We'll see. So, yeah, yeah. You might have to go to a different college, which I, I'm sure. You, go, but yeah, but I mean, so um, I don't know where we're. What are we at? What time? What are we looking at? Thirty-five. ish I want to say. So um, if you want to, we could just hop right into the questions. If you're good with, if you're good with that. All right. Yeah. Let's go. All right, so, you know, we start off with mine, the better ones, before he says that again. Not a chance. Not a chance. All right, so uh, top three favorite collegiate wrestlers ever. None of them can be from your college. Mm. Oh, okay, it's tough. Number one, it's got to be Kyle Dake. I've watched him since I could walk. I've always <laughs> loved him. I aspired to be just like you know, that's why I got good at wrestling because of Kyle Day. Watching his documentaries, that's why I got good. I was like, yeah. I want to be him. We were talking about um, this today. Everyone before they answered this question said David Taylor. You were the first guy the first out of any of them to say Kyle Day for any of the answers. Yeah. yeah. So that's the same thing here. Everyone's like, what do you mean Kyle Day? I'm like, nah, I got Kyle Day. Second, we got David Taylor. Of course. <laughs> Magic man, man. He was a different level back in the day. Oh, yeah. He still is. He's crazy. Um, yeah. So, actually, they come into the Air Force wrestling room quite often. They were here just actually a couple weeks ago training together. So, the OTC is 20 minutes away from here. And, you know, it's been closed for some reasons recently. And so, they come to the Air Force wrestling room, even last year, you know. So, they're just wow. – they're awesome. Yeah. So, they come yeah. in scrap. Um Let's see, number three. Oh, that's tough. Choosing three yeah, is I guess hard. I, didn't, I guess I didn't know that that's where the Air Force Academy's at is right near there. Yep, it's about 20 minutes away. So whenever the Olympic team comes here, we usually hop in with them. Or they'll, they'll come up in with us. Three, I got to go with Kyle Snyder. He was also yeah. one of my one of the big guys I was watching. And I remember watching him versus Gwiz, and the size difference was I was like, Oh my gosh, he looked tiny and he's a big dude, but so is Gwiz. But definitely that's probably my top three. Okay. The next question. You versus David Taylor, normal folk style match. Let's say he weighs like 200. You weigh what you do now. What's the score? Oh man. Wow. And to be in your favor, we'll tie one of his arms behind his back. That's probably not going to change much, but 
Uh, so we'll give you one arm, and he's like 30 pounds lighter than you. Because what was it? Uh, Eric Schultz was Rip. saying him versus Jordan Burroughs was a 10 to 4 match. Yeah. His closest. I think no, it was an re- overtime so- match. It was an yeah, overtime, yeah. Yeah. A five-way ride, and he waits. You know what? Next time he comes in here, I'm gonna ask the wrestle match, and I'll give you a firm answer. Can we get a video? Um, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I have to ask him now. But I don't know. I mean, probably a solid match. Probably a major decision. Twelve four. We'll say he's fast. He's hard to take down. Wait, yeah. is that you winning twelve four? Are you losing twelve four? Yeah. Well, he probably get. I got a gas tank, but I mean. He's the magic man, so. Interesting. What's other people said? What have they been saying? Um, I mean, this is just well, a question because you said Taylor yeah. they come in your room. Uh, yeah, we asked him. Um, well, obviously, when we had Schultz on, he's from Nebraska. So we didn't even know that they actually wrestled three times. And he got his butt kicked twice. And then one time they went to overtime. And oh, wow. uh, Burroughs took him down. And he lost. So. We haven't really got to ask. I mean, we asked Jordan Wood when he was wrestling Zach Ray, and he didn't really give us a firm answer about what those practices are like oh, either. Man, Ray probably thought so. Like, but, but I um, wrestled. Yeah. yeah. Dustin Gilmore's here, and he's he kicks my butt too. We have, like we've had some days where you know he you know he gets the upper hand. Some days I get the upper hand on him. We go into overtime, so. I don't know. I got to give David Taylor the respect he deserves on that one until proven otherwise. Hey, you got a lot of snow. Would what you he, say you major? Would you say he gets a major or? Fair. Maybe. Fair. Okay. I, I was going to I was going to say six to one, but. Now, what do you think if, if Kyle Dake and you both wrestle what you weigh now, if you and Kyle Dake wrestled, what do you think the score would be? I'd be Kyle. I'd be. I'd, I'd keep it. I'd say ten seven. You think you just outsize him? You think you would just be able to? I mean, crazy enough. I think like any heavyweight that was at like you know top sixteen or you know that qualified national tournament could probably beat you know all the one twenty five, one thirty threes, you know, I would probably one forty nine like the national champs. I'm just saying size you matters. Think, you think that the guy who got Last place didn't, didn't place the nationals was the first guy out of the tournament could beat Yanni. Yes, I don't think there's a chance. What's his name? I'm the Tyrell saying, Gordon dude. You don't think he could beat Yanni? No, dude. I, I think you size. honestly give him the O'Toole. He would, or even okay, O'Toole. Okay, I, no, I, you, you were teammates. Oh, that's up hit. to one. It's insane. I mean, I also I I could power through him only because I um. If he had like you know extra ten pounds, yeah. he'd get he'd get me. But he Keegan's doesn't a, cut, right? He, no. Yeah. Keegan's just a. I don't. He's he's not even human. I don't know what he is. Keegan's but a guy we've been hunting down. You know, we called Don Bradley. I I called Rocky. Luma called Zach. We have no one's been able to get in contact with Keegan. I so we've been text. trying. I, I was actually talking. Excuse, I was talking to him yesterday. I'll, I'll tell you guys. You guys are asking Tell them for we're him. looking for him. Tell them we're asking for him. <laughs> We've had some great inside help from everybody, but I guess so we'll hop into my questions because, um, you know, everybody appreciates my questions more because they're obviously there's better. So, um, you know, you're living. I, I want to say, you're, are you on a, you're on a base? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So what's the best food you've eaten from the, from the, the dining hall, the chow hall, whatever they call it, best food that you've been served? Spicy chicken sandwich. Spicy that's chicken like sandwich? that's what oh, we man. yeah. You know, All right. and then, I ordered this today. The whole Mr. Beast burger thing. Oh yeah, no, I've it, never done one of those at once, but ever since then no. I've been like, eh. I wouldn't. All right. And then obviously we all asked, we got I got two more for you. And then I think everybody in the military will you know have some sort of answer to this. What's the worst MRE out there? Have you eaten them? And if you did, what's the worst one you had? Yeah, so we had a few different trains. So I got a small story to this. Um, they, so, you know, they always throw in some candy with them. But okay, here we go. So 
during base, you can have MRE. We also have MREs. We have like survival training. So we get thrown into the wild for like three, four days. And they give us MREs, which is awesome. Cause you know, I guess someone got, they ate a bad rabbit, got sick, but we get MREs. And so I got, to, you know, kind of taste, I, got to, I got to taste test some of these things. And so uh, let's see, we got chili mac and cheese. That's a good one. It goes in well, doesn't go out well. Let's see. I think the worst MRE, there's like, there's 32 flavors. Um, Holy, main, that's, yeah, that's quite a lot, lot of variety. Uh, let's see. I think some of them are breakfast too. The oh, worst man. one. Wow. I feel like all like a couple of my friends are in the military and like, I forget what they've told me that they've told me there's some bad ones. There are some bad ones. I'm trying to think of them. Well, I'm, I'm not a big spaghetti person, but I'm spaghetti. I was actually pretty decent. You have to heat them up yourself, but wow. I don't know. You, at that point, you don't care. You're just you like, I'm a, I need to eat food. I don't remember what it was. But, how many do you uh, get? Uh, so they give you like two per day. Okay. And I was like, look, I need more than two a day. And so I kind of, I got, I got some more out of it. You know, I was, I was like, Hey, look, we need more. I called them in. They came and gave us some more, but two a day usually, but you know, we're also, we were hiking like eight miles a day. So I'm like, how do you guys expect us to live off of two more? Hey, you're, especially like, you're a large guy. To, I'm like, you're look, bigger than the average okay, military I, guy. Yeah. You gotta give me food. You can't yeah. drive a truck 500 miles on a quarter tank of gas. I'm like, come on. Yeah, that was a crazy thing. We just talked to Eric Schultz, and he actually told us the story of how he walked a hundred and not, 104 miles in 49 hours. That's um, impressive. In Nebraska, he walked from like Lincoln to wherever. It was 104 miles there and back, and he did it in 49 hours. Wow. With, like, no supplies. He had a refillable water bottle and two meal bars. And he, that's, he did it in 49 hours. No sleep. I was like, man, you're a nutcase. Like, that's some military well, stuff. That's what, that's what's going through my head. Like, this is, some, this is some stuff the military would be training you to do. Yeah, you won't find me doing that. We have some stuff like that, but it's only, like, 50 miles. But then, like, you got to hike. And you also got to have 45 pounds on your back. Maybe not that much. That's that's too much. Maybe on a smaller one. For that, it's probably like a 25, but still, it's a pain. You're not going to find me doing that stuff. I love those guys. I support them doing it. That's not for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, not what you're about. And then, obviously, the last question we ask this to everybody, um, you can take four of your Air Force wrestling teammates with you into the zombie apocalypse. Now, y'all are some bad sons of bitches. I'll give you that. You're probably going to have the best squad with the best aim, knowing how to use oh. a gun, being that you're the first military school guy. So you can take four of your teammates with you to just kick ass in the zombie apocalypse. Who are the four? And a quick right, reason why you're taking each one. I already got them. And we're, I don't care. Those people you asked, we'd survive the longest, hands down. Oh, 100%. Big, I, I, I grew up with a shooting range in my backyard. A lot of guys did the same. And we came here. Okay, so first on the list, we got Calvin Sun. He's a you know, 197 pounder next year. That man has no fear. We've done some stupid things in our lives. We survived to sit, you know, the same other day. Definitely want him. He's he's got some good skills. Sam Wolf, he's ridiculously smart. So, no, so is so is Cal, but you know, Sam's gonna figure out where to go, all that stuff, how to kill him different ways. Let's see. Also out of there, we got We've got Matthew Cedillo. He's actually on our shooting team here. That man can snipe anything from anywhere. And let's see who else. I get, I get one more. Am I included in the squad or I get me plus four? You get you plus four, so five in total. Oh, this is a tough one. All right. We got Gianno Petricelli. Definitely got to go with G. He plays more video games and more Warzone than anyone. He has to be good at shooting a gun. He, he knows strategy. And we're, sur- we're never, we're living forever. We're not, we're never getting, never getting killed with that squad for there, sure. There you go, everybody watching. You heard it here first. The first official military college zombie apocalypse survival team with the leader right there, who himself yep, is a dead eye and an absolute unit. So 
I think, you know, in my personal opinion, I'm going to say probably the best team so far. Only other oh. team maybe is Nash on Garrett put together a team of just the guys that were on the U.S. Olympic team with him. So it was Dink, it was it was DT, it was all those guys, and Gilman. So I'm saying Gilman's a nutcase, so he might, you know, he might cause some problems if you guys bump into each other. So, or, yeah, that one was good. Oklahoma State, that team was, that, that was pretty good. You can and say Iowa. It. No, you got to say I, it, bro, oh, Oklahoma oh. State. Yeah, so Oklahoma State, we had Luke Serber on, uh, obviously, who you beat in your conference. Like, and, um... His comment was, we asked him, would you take A.J. Ferrari with you? Because, of course, we want to know. Guy's always posting shooting guns. He goes, no, he'd shoot me in the foot. That, that was- I got no him shooting. I, I've i done the gun safety stuff. We got a range. We have people come over, and I see him do some stuff, and I'm like, oh, I was like, I, I can't watch it anymore. I'm like, are you kidding me? You're putting a loaded gun in your pot. You know, whatever. He does what he wants. But, yeah, that's a, that's a good reason. I don't blame him. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like he's not going to come on the podcast now. Hey, that's not – who cares? We got <laughs> – I think I that's views. We are respecting hey, it, but, you know, it's all right. It's all right. We just got some hey. stuff to learn. Got some safety to learn. Yeah, yeah. Bring him to the Air Force Academy. Let him, <laughs> let him know. Let, let him learn a little bit. We'll bring him to the range. We'll show him, you know, because they'll smack you upside your head if you mess up one thing. So, they'll get oh. him. <laughs> Hey, yeah. The military is a little different, but you know we appreciate uh, appreciate you coming on. Uh, great, great time. Obviously, uh, always a great time, and uh, we look forward to having you back on. Maybe in the future, you know, you uh, obviously are nowhere near satisfied with your career yet. So we're definitely looked to having you on in a year or two, and hopefully, we got a couple hundred thousand followers, and we know we got tons of people watching. So hopefully, hopefully, we see you next year at nationals. That's our big plan. We want to go to Tulsa next year. So hopefully oh, we you, see you there. Yeah, you should definitely. The Big Twelve is the Nationals again, but yeah, thanks for having me. Great time, oh, and that's what we could piggyback. Go oh, watch the Twelve, and then go watch Nationals. Well, then you can't qualify for Nationals. So, oh, I wouldn't get the chance to qualify myself. Then I know that's but, very true. <laughs> I'd say, oh man, yeah, no, that would be awesome too. All right, man. it sounds good. Yes, yes, thanks for having me. It was yeah. fun. Yeah, thank you for coming on. Um, so this has been episode 108 of Late Night Shots. We'll see you guys again next time.